Meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order, let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, mm. Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Our invocation this evening will be given by Dr. Mel Brown, and our pledge is led by Mrs. C.J. Haynes. If you would please stand. Let's pray. <clears throat> our God and Creator. Since we have only one life to live, we pray that you would provide us with your guiding light so that we as members of the CSD Board of Trustees uh, provide, uh, can spend the days of our life effectively providing the bold and beautiful members of the CISD staff and faculty an academic environment that enables them to effectively provide the young and restless students who fill the classrooms of CISD with a qual the quality, same quality of education that my children received here. May every student who graduates from CISD, from a CISD campus uh, and begins their search for tomorrow be so well prepared that upon completion of their academic careers, none will be lost, clueless, or merely a survivor, but capable of dancing with the stars of the vocational field which they choose to pursue. These things we humbly pray. Yeah. Please join me in honoring our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now our state. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Brown, and thank you, Ms. Haynes. We'll move uh, now to awards and recognitions, and I'm going to call on Kathy Clark, our communications director at this time. President Sasser, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Tonight we want to recognize and congratulate local media representatives who have been named to the Texas Association of School Boards Media Honor Roll. Jim Fredericks, editor and publisher for The Courier, Kasha Misik, reporter for The Courier, and Kimberly Stauffer, reporter for The Chronicle. The Media Honor Roll recognizes media representatives statewide for fair and balanced reporting of news about public schools. CISD nominated these individuals because their efforts to become familiar with the district's mission and goals, because they report school news in a fair, accurate, and balanced manner, and they give high profile to positive news about our students, our schools, <coughs> our students and schools throughout the district. Additionally, Jim, Pasha, and Kimberly have maintained a collaborative approach to reporting the news and established a wonderful working relationship with the members throughout the district. Just to give you a little bit of the um, special things that they have done, the Courier, under Mr. Frederick's leadership, established a CISD campus <coughs> close-up, which is a monthly publication that highlights all of the great things that are going on with our students in each of the geographic areas. Also, the Courier has worked collaboratively with the district to publish a bi-yearly uh, publication, which is called the Activity Guide, which highlights activities and um, services that are available and could profit and benefit our students. Mr. Fredericks was a teacher for the day this past summer when we had our Student Leadership Academy, and he came up and he shared with the uh, 50 junior high students the role of media in community leadership. He was a big hit. <laughs> <laughs> Kasha writes the CISD weekly uh, briefs, which, which are published each Wednesday, and she and makes every effort to make sure that we highlight our campuses and our students' achievements. She continuously calls and asks 
ask about things to highlight the great things that are happening in the district. So too with Kimberly Stauffer, who is a reporter for the Chronicle. The Chronicle is published once a week, Neighborhood News. She works for that section that's published on Thursday. And she, too, makes every effort to highlight what is the great things that are going on in the district. I would also like to share that all of the individuals also provide information to the community about the challenges that we face as a district. But they always do so in a fair and collaborative approach. I would like to introduce the members that have been nominated and are now members of the media honor roll. The first person we'd like to congratulate is Mr. Jim Fredericks, editor, editor and publisher of The Courier. If you'll stay right there, I'll give you a chance to speak in just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the next person we'd like to uh, congratulate is Kasha Mysik, who is a reporter for The Courier. <laughs> and Kimberly Stauffer, reporter for The Chronicle. <laughs> and Dr. Snyder has something she'd like to share. Uh, before we uh, let each of you speak, on behalf of Ms. Assessor and the Board of Trustees and uh, Dr. Stockton, it truly is a great honor to recognize you for your distinguished award. Uh, we appreciate uh, greatly the uh, uh, wonderful uh, media that you have uh, presented uh, uh, consistently for the last uh, four years uh, regarding our school district. You can't open the Courier or the uh, This Week Chronicle without saying something about our school district. And uh, we thank you very, very much for being such wonderful collaborative partners. Well, I just want to thank you, uh, uh, board members, and uh, that's it, where are you? There you are. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and Don. Um, for the uh, recognition and uh, really appreciate it. And it's true, um, it really is a partnership. Uh, the media institutions do have to work uh, together uh, with the institutions they cover. Uh, we are to be objective, um, but we don't want to be so distant and so adversarial that that relationship breaks down and uh, y'all and the community suffers as a result. So our job is to be fair and balanced and to, and to work with you. And I'm glad that you feel that we've done that, and, and we're happy to be able to do that. And certainly applaud your leadership, uh, which has uh, just contributed to this district's uh, reputation and ability to do its job. Thank you. I just want to thank you all for uh, bestowing this honor on me and all of us. I know it uh, takes a lot of work with both the district and the papers to get this out, and I appreciate board members and Kathy for always taking phone calls and, and working with me when I do have uh, questions for you and stories to work on. So thank you. I uh, just like to thank the board, Dr. Stockton and Ms. Clark for, uh, for recognizing me for this. And I feel like I've come last. So everyone's already said what I wanted to say. So thank you very much for always working with me. I know I can be uh, annoying sometimes. <laughs> but uh, you guys are good sports and you're a good district. So thank you very much. I think it's a pleasure to work here. Great. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. The next item on the agenda is reserved for citizen participation. Um, Madam Board Secretary, is anyone registered to speak? Hi. We'll move on to item number three on the agenda, which is the consent agenda. You've had this since um, Thursday. Do I hear a motion that we approve? So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded that we approve the consent agenda. Any comments or questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Um, item 4A, curriculum. 
Dr. Stockton? I'd like to uh, request that we move an item up on the agenda, Ms. Sasser. Um, can we, uh, with board approval, can we move the, uh, with your approval, can we move human resources item 9A, uh, the naming of the principal of Hauser Elementary School up to the next item? Okay. As uh, I share with you every time I make a recommendation to you for a principal position, it's it's probably the most important thing that I do because the principal works with the teachers and hires, makes recommendations to hire the teachers and they're just pivotal, pivotal in our school district. And at the last board meeting, the board approved Jeff Fuller as principal of York Junior High School and I informed the board that I transferred J.J. Dahl from Hauser to Kaufman. J.J.'s in the audience. Good to see you tonight. Thank you for, for accepting the new responsibility. And tonight, I, the uh, final thing that I mentioned, I was going to come back tonight and recommend Paula Green as principal of Hauser. And I've had the opportunity to watch Paul over the last two years. And uh, in addition to that, I received a, a phone call from her former superintendent. Uh, she first came here, before, in fact, before we hired her. And she didn't know he was calling, but she made such an impression on him in Irving that he thought he would call and just let me know that there's somebody in our community that, that I'd like to talk to, or I'd want to talk to. And Paul has done a great job at, at Hauser and has served now as interim principal for how many days, Paula? <laughs> for, for the last uh, several weeks and, and uh, he's just doing a great job. So it's my pleasure tonight to recommend to you Paula Green for the principalship of Hauser. So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second that we um, approve Paula Green as the new principal of Hauser Elementary. And uh, all in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, same sign. Unanimously. Good evening to everyone. Um, to the Board of Trustees and the Administration of Conroe ISD, I want to tell you how much I thank you for this opportunity. I have been here for two years and it has been an awesome two years, so I look forward to leading Hauser and working with our teachers and our students and continuing that standard of excellence that Hauser is known for. So thank you for the opportunity and we will do great things. Your family. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, here with me this evening is my daughter, Terica, <laughs> and my son, Dexter, but he's asleep, but he is here. <laughs> And although my husband could not be here tonight, I do want to let you know that um, his name is Terry Green. He is a command sergeant major in the Army, and he is currently on active duty. So he's not here tonight. But um, he's very proud, and I just didn't want this opportunity to pass and not mention him. Um, some special people that are here with me tonight, um, friends who have become family, J.J. Dahl, former principal of Hauser, <laughs> Dina Mills, who works at Hauser with me, and my new administrative team, Rebecca Burlingson and Marianne Sandstrom. Congratulations. <laughs> At this time, uh, because we have some county officials uh, as our guests this evening, uh, with the board's permission, we're going to go ahead and move up also item 10B on the agenda at this time. Dr. Stockton. It's 10, uh, 10 B's emergency radio agreement, and I will turn the item over to Mrs. Galatis. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. This is Saps, members of the board. Um, a little over a week ago, uh, we were approached by the county with an opportunity to participate in um, the new regional radio system 
Um, the county is willing to provide the district some funds to purchase radios um, to be a part of that system that would allow us to communicate within our region with other law enforcement agencies. We just received the agreement that would commemorate that arrangement about 4 o'clock this evening, and we haven't reviewed it. But um, what we are asking tonight, because there is a short timeline um, on the ordering of the equipment that you consider, um, uh, certainly it is your option, um, giving us the uh, authority to review the agreement, work with outside counsel to come with a, a legally satisfying or satisfactory agreement to all parties involved. And if we're able to do that, Dr. Stockton, the authority to sign the agreement, something for you to consider this evening. I know Ms. Peggy Frankhauser, Dr. Hines, and um, Sheriff is here tonight. If you have any questions about the radio system itself, um, I've just given you very brief information because I don't exactly understand how it works, but I know it's important and everybody's going to be mandated within the next couple of years to be a part of a system such Remove. as this. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve um, the acceptance of the... To you, uh, give us... Oh, uh. Okay. Let me. Um, actually, what we're approving is the acquisition of... Um, the radio system and related equipment subject to legally appropriate agreement being reached between the county and the district is what we're actually um, voting to do this mm -hmm. evening. So um, the motion has been made and seconded. Comments or questions? Uh, if you don't mind, I, I had talked with the chief a little bit about this, but um, could you just briefly give us what advantages we have to go in with the county, to going in with the county on this radio system? Chief or Sheriff, either one. I think the advantages is the uh, Montgomery County Hospital District system uh, only will have the participants of City of Conroe and the hospital district. Uh, and let me kind of back up to what we had, communications we had this past year and several years before. Uh, having the same system and having all law enforcement and uh, first responders on the same system has been great. For us, the school police, we monitor uh, the, all the other channels. We scan their channels to see what's happening around our campuses. Quickly, if there's a, a uh, robbery or abduction that's out in the community that's close to our campus and the suspect is running towards our campus, then we need to know that quickly. Uh, by scanning that, we're able to scan those channels and then quickly uh, uh, implement our EOP to whatever that event may require. Uh, that's a benefit. The county system, uh, as we go into the next year, the hospital system will only house the city of Conroe. Uh, which is primary just the Conroe feeder zone. Uh, the county system will have all the other law enforcement on it. Therefore, scanning will be a problem trying to scan all the channels uh, using the si current system we're on with the hospital district. Going to the new county system, we'll be able to scan all the county agencies uh, outside of the Conroe feeder zone we will maintain a few radios in the Conroe feeder zone on the hospital system to scan those to where we will have multiple coverage. So it will be contoluted a little bit with with a different with another radio system, but we feel that the best uh, uh, the, the best results or the best possible option that we would have would be the county system. Chief, correct me if I'm wrong, but it also allows us to communicate with Harris County. Yes, and, and I didn't say that. Let me, let me clarify, too. Harris, it's a regional system, and all the law enforcement, a majority of law enforcement in Harris County, uh, not just Harris County, Walker County, Harris County, uh, Fort Bend County, Galveston County, Missouri County, it's a regional system. Which means for us in ISD, uh, all the Harris County and all the ISDs that use the Harris County system, we will now be able to talk to them. If our buses were caught, broke down at Fort Bend or Katy ISD, we would be able, their police officers there, there could talk directly to our dispatch, could talk directly to myself on the radio. Uh, so we would have those type of communications that we haven't had in the past. Chief, I, my understanding was that there was one general station or frequency yes. or something that 
the separate radios weren't going to be necessary to be able to monitor the Conroe and Hospital District. And, and you're right. Uh, all channels have a link what they call a motor bridge. The county system will have be available to have a motor bridge, which one channel we will be able to go to, and we will be able to talk to uh, uh, talk to that agency. That will not be their primary agency, so we would not be able to scan that to get the same effect that we would have throughout the county scanning their primary uh, calls for service, their primary uh, uh, radio channels. Yes, uh, explain that again. I'm sorry. I, okay. I, I, I the the, the okay. motor bridge will enable us to have one channel, one frequency that we will be able to talk with City of Conroe, or they can talk with us. Uh, however, it's not their primary channel. Their primary channel will remain on the hospital district and their system. Therefore, we would not be able to scan it by using the equipment that we will have from the uh, Montgomery County system. <coughs> but we will be scanning it because we're keeping a few regular. Yes, okay. yes, I think that's, uh, uh, I feel that's a must. I have a question, Chief Hines. Yes, sir. Sounds like, sounds like this is a good uh, situation for us. Um, approximately how much training will be necessary to bring our force up to speed on this? Not any at all, really, because the radio communication equipment is very similar. Uh, our dispatch will have a console. It will require a little training, but we're already using a, a console, a different brand, but it's not, it's, it's, it's user friendly. Okay. It's not going to be that much. There'll be a little downtime, but not much at all. That's good. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you speak of the city of Conroe, what about the city of Oak Ridge or other parts? Okay. Of the city of Oak Ridge is a uh, city of Oak Ridge, Shenandoah. Mm -hmm. uh, all are going on to the Montgomery County uh, Sheriff System, the Montgomery County System. Uh, we've already talked to them. That's going to be a big asset because as we open up two stadiums, uh, we will have a majority of our uh, officers working will we'll probably come from off outside agencies. Uh, we will have our officers working, but we'll be having outside officers. So having a, and we've already talked with the county, we will have a, a separate a talk group that we'll be able to call CISD events north and CISD events south. So therefore, when we have simultaneous games, we will have be able to have uh, uh, two channels that we'll be able to have everyone go to. Through our dispatch, if they do not have that channel, which they should have the channel, we will be able to link them to that channel for that particular event. So it's it's a very beneficial then on special events also. The other thing is we're very appreciative of the generous offer of the county that would allows us to be able to participate in the system. I don't know that we would have been able to participate otherwise. Thanks, Chair. Sheriff Gage, would you like to say? Well, uh, Christmas after uh, when he comes to radio, if I turn it on and it doesn't work, I call somebody. But Captain Teddy Frank out there had. Certainly.
thank you, uh, Sheriff and Captain Frank Houser, for being here tonight. And Chief, would you like to introduce your officers that are here tonight to, that have been working yes, on this uh, as well? Actually, my command staff, Sergeant Matt Baitlock, he's worked tremendously on the radios in the past and helped me with uh, kind of understanding the system. Now. Uh, Sergeant Johnson, White Johnson. <laughs> Thank you. Sergeant Chris Sutton. Sergeant Kim Grind. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay. The motion has been made and seconded then that we approve the acquisition of the radio system and related equipment subject to a legally appropriate agreement being reached between the county and the district. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Thank you all very much. Thank you. And I know that you may have better things to do than. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Been here. <coughs> okay. We will go back to item 4A, Dr. Stockton. Item 4A is U.S. Department of Justice Office of Community Oriented Policing Services of COPS Secure Our Schools Program Grant. Dr. Hines is here to present that. President Sasser, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, tonight I'm here to request your approval for us to apply <laughs> for the uh, U.S. Department of Justice Office of Community Orienting, Oriented Policing Services, or COPS, Secure Our Schools Program grant. Uh, we're seeking funding under this grant, which is a program that allows uh, funds to be used to improve securities at school, uh, security at schools by placement of deterrent measures on school grounds and campuses. And as you very much are aware, since you've approved most of them, we have many, many cameras throughout the district and uh, our facilities. And uh, we are now in our fifth year of doing this. And what's happening is, is we have anticipated that in our latest bond issue, but we're starting to get into now the life cycle of some of the servers and the equipment. So all these uh, cameras and servers have to be changed out as they get to a certain age or they may break. Uh, and so we have a certain amount of cost that we will have to um, maintain in order to keep our system up and running. And so we're applying for this grant for $190,000, $150,000 of which will be for equipment, hardware, and 40000 will be for ongoing technical support uh, and maintenance for a total of $190,000, which we will be matching. We will probably exceed that match. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded that we approve the grant application for the COP Secure Our Schools 2008 grant program. Any comments or questions? All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Hines. Uh, item uh, 5A. Dr. Uh, Mr. Burns is here to present the Conroe High School Asphalt and Parking Lot Repairs. Uh, Ms. Astor, Dr. Stockton, a member of the board, we're asking the, uh, the board to approve the, the amount of $297,817 uh, submitted by Ellis Constructors. Uh, this will provide for uh, asphalt repair, overlays where needed, resealing of the tire surface, and restriping and painting and numbering of the whole campus, excluding the front of Conroe High School, which will be used for a lay down area during construction. Uh, we, if the board approves, we'd we'll like to get this work done prior to school starting. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded that we approve the proposal for Conroe High School asphalt and parking lot repairs. Any comments or questions? All in favor, raise your hand. <clears throat> All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Uh, item 5B, Dr. Stockton. 5B is the approval of the GMP for the additions at Tuff and Derrickson Elementary Schools. Uh, we're asking the board to approve the uh, GMP of $5,498,007 uh, for 12 additional classrooms at uh, both Derrickson and Tuff. Uh, this was a, we had a four classroom alternate on both of these class these schools, but uh, due to the growth in the, the, between the two theater zones, or actually zones. Did you say rest, 12? Yes. We, the base bid was eight each. Uh, we took a an alternate, oh, okay. which uh, included seven hundred thousand dollars for the two uh, two schools, which is eight four classrooms per school. <clears throat> We're recommending though that we take uh, the alternate due to the growth in the areas. So moved. Um, 
Second. Okay. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, <laughs> comments and questions. Yes, no, 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 no. I was going to ask to have this item moved um, possibly to our next board meeting, the special meeting on August 5th, so that we might have an opportunity to review some um, population numbers between the schools, um, not Derrickson and Tuck, but uh, additional schools. Such as uh, Powell, well, Powell, Gladys, yeah. Bush, Buckaloo. Um, my concern is um, adding the schools, the current economic um, environment. Perhaps I mean it makes sense to add the twelve if we're going to do it, and but I think we would be remiss if we did not look at population distribution and alternatives in light of the economic environment. Well, are you suggesting then that there might be space? That's Possibly, it. I don't know, and that's why I would like to visit with the numbers. And I apologize for not getting the numbers prior to this meeting, but I would just kind of like to look at those numbers, whether we build it now or, and maybe that this is the correct answer. But that, that's all I was going to. I thought two weeks would not make a substantial difference, but Mr. Burns, correct me if that would hinder the poly, uh, project. No, ma'am, it would not. I'll rescind my motion. When are, when are these rooms uh, uh, supposed to be ready? Next year? Next, next year. Well, I would agree with that. I mean, I was going to say zoning, basically. Yeah. Is there any reason that we could build eight and and save the money on the four on each school? And while they're there is the time to build them. But do we need to build them? I, I, I agree with that review. Plus, my concern is building this many many classrooms, how does that impact poor space? Right. And poor is okay. Gene, do you want to stand up and address this? We do have the core space there. Um, this is the same facility as, as Vogel, for example, and they were uh, this school year. So the core space I don't think is an issue for the campus. The, the flex schools have a separate gym which some of the other elementary don't. Which gives right. us a little core space is solid for that number. Okay. So, we'll be glad if, if that's your pleasure to bring that back. Uh, we can bring you back some information about the other campuses. Happy to. Yeah. So, are you she was your her? motion? Yes. Okay. And I apologize, then, Mr. Burns, for not getting oh, with you prior to the... Not a problem. Then do we have a motion to uh, move Table. this... To table this motion. That would be my motion. Okay. okay. And I'll second. Okay. I've given a motion a second to table uh, the motion for the GMP for Tuff and Dershon until we can get some more figures to uh, look at on those. Um, any comments or questions? Others? All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, same sign. Okay. Motion carries, and we'll get that on our August 5th. Um, Item four, uh, 5C. 5C is the approval of the GMP for Flex 12, Flex 13, Mr. Burns. <coughs> the board to approve the GMP is submitted by Duratech of $41,757,697. Uh, this will include uh, the intermediate number 12 on the 186 site. Uh, it will include Flex 13, which is in the uh, Oak Ridge <coughs> area. The uh, off-site infrastructures uh, and earthwork and utilities for 14, which is on the same size as 186. Uh, in order to get a permit to start on uh, the intermediate, uh, we were required to do all the uh, stormwater detention and all stormwater uh, piping and infrastructure for the, the whole, four, whole campus, which consists of four schools. We had to do that up front. And that is the three million eight eighty one number. So anyway, uh, also we're doing the pad for number fourteen and necessary infrastructure for stormwater and san sanitary sewer at this same time. And they're going to save money, but also uh, stormwater wise was required to by City of Conroe to get a permit. Now flex number fourteen is which one? That's the elementary down below the intermediate on one eighty six. So moved. Second. And the motion has been made and seconded that we approve the GMP for the new flex twelve and. 13. Other comments or questions? Just one quick one. Does the 41757 line up with our 
a bond budget. I mean, how did we come in? Are we coming? We're, we're just under budget. Yeah. Very good, Mr. Burns. Thank you. And remind me, 13 is a is an elementary elementary school. 14 is an elementary. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Dr. Stephan, item 5D. Okay, bond referendum update, Mr. Burns. <laughs> uh, this this is a uh, kind of a panoramic <laughs> view of the Ben Mile, the new Granger land, which is actually standing right there by the, the new marquee, looking at how the campus is lined up. Uh, York Junior Could High. Could you go back to that? Yeah, would you Burns? go back? Yeah. That was cool. That, um, you, know, you think nice. back five years ago and what that, you look to your left, you had a building that we tore down and there was nothing to the right. And to see it today, it's just, uh, it's, it's something we should be very proud of. Uh, York Junior High. Uh, here again is a panorama between uh, York Junior High and the Tom Cox uh, Intermediate. This is the, the front of the uh, York Junior High School. Uh, they're getting ready to pour the uh, front sidewalk, and then we're getting ready to start school pretty soon. Uh, the kitchen, the art classroom, uh, this is the gymnasium, the ball field, Tom Cox uh, Intermediate, that's the bus loading area, front entry. Uh, classrooms are already set up, ready for school, gymnasium. Sports complex, auditorium entry. Uh, this is the uh, reception desk. That's the they're putting in the glass panels now for the balcony. Uh, this is <laughs> going to be kind of a time phased uh, sequence of events. This was June the 26th on Saturday. Uh, this whole operation took about eight hours to do the plastering. So this is when they get they were getting started wetting down the existing concrete. They started plastering the walls. The deep end, working our way up to the starting the shallow end at the break. Another hour or so two later, this is today. So it's, but anyway, that that whole operation took about eight hours on Saturday. And how many men? Eighty-five. Have you tested how many? the water? Eighty-five, ma'am. Have you tested the water? This man, the water's already this clear. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wonder personally if you've tested it. <laughs> <laughs> the water stop. Oh, you mean for us jumping in? <laughs> We're saving that for the board. Anyway, the, the building is really coming together quick Has anybody now. been swimming in the new pool? That's what we're asking. Not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge. <laughs> they haven't had any permission to. Uh, we're planning on taking uh, the project over suspension complete. Um, the stadium probably... The early second week in August, because they're going to do some scrimmages there on, on the August the 11th. And we'll probably take over the natatorium the 15th or a little bit later. The what story, do you plan to do August 11th? With the uh, coaches would like to do some scrimmages, which means we have to take uh, over the possession of the stadium prior to that. And the insurance liability reasons. And the press box has about another week, week and a half work to complete it, and we're ready to go. Some more pictures of the uh, stadium. Armstrong Elementary. Ooh, could you go up. back to that? Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yeah, not do, here to we argue. We do have spell check on our wall. We just lost the H. So uh, <laughs> we, um, this was the existing uh, original <laughs> sign, which we do have new letters coming, which is going to be part of the contract. That really looks nice. How that's tied into it the, does. Yes, it looks yeah, very yeah, really. nice. Uh, the uh, this is the library. Uh, this is in the new classroom uh, wing. The restrooms, transportation custodial. Uh, we'll be taking possession of this probably within two weeks. Uh, the inside, all the infrastructure is being complete. Airlines and everything being hooked up and tested. Uh, this is the uh, the room for all the drivers. Break room, eating room, combination. Uh, route boxes. Another shot up. Uh, this is the uh, the maintenance warehouse and loading dock. Stewards Force uh, Flex 11. Building pad is being uh, near completion. You see it back in the foreground. 
Uh, Flex 12 is one we just approved a while ago. Uh, that building pad is uh, complete. This is where the detention pond goes. It's a 27 acre hole in the ground, 12 foot deep for the whole 186 acre site. So how many acres and how deep? It's the 27 acres, 12 foot deep. But it's, it's, it has to hold all the water for the uh, the whole 186 acres. Uh, and four grounds, the building pad for number 12, 14 will be started soon. soon. Runyon, if you're familiar with that building, all the green uh, wall surfaces are now gone. Oh, wow. That's so sad. Oh. <laughs> what happened to our green, green walls? walls? They're gone. Did you save any? No, ma'am. I want a brick. We're still there. <laughs> They're just covered up. They're just covered up. The, uh, all the new doors and hardware will be here on the 28th. It has really taken on a different but look. It makes a big difference, doesn't it? It it's, it's really looks it looks handsome. If you were aware of the restrooms in uh, Runyon, yes. the lady asked a while ago, yes. uh, back there, uh, this is what they look like now. The tall petitions will be installed in the next few yeah. weeks. No and that's it. Uh, they're, they're coming. They're coming. Yeah. This, this is an inappropriate time for this question, let me know. But, uh, you know, all this stuff that's coming out of the legislature on the emphasis on okay. physical fitness and obesity, in our bond, have we taken care of whatever it's, we're going to need to do to some of the schools to accommodate space for exercise to address those? I think we have. Uh, okay. you know, the, the big issue there is change of lifestyle right. and those types of things. We, we've we been pretty aggressive with adding like uh, semester eighth grade PE. So we're, in, we're in good shape. So it's space is not going to be an issue. It's just going to be a scheduling and, and programming issue. Yes. You know, to say we ever have... Um, too much space. We'll never have too much space. Yeah. We'll always use more space. But we're in good. We're in pretty good position. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Burns and Mr. Bollinger. Terrific job. Now you get to start on the next one. Or you already started on the next one. <laughs> All right. We'll move to item six, business and finance. Uh, item six A, Dr. Stockton. Item six A, uh, CSP. The workers' compensation insurance, CSP for auto, general, and educators, legal liability insurance, CSP for property insurance, and renewal, uh, renewal of sexual misconduct liability insurance. Mr. Cox. President Sasser, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, I'd like to recommend that the Board of Trustees award CSP 28-006, workers' compensation insurance, CSP 28007, auto, general, and educators' legal liability insurance, and CSP 008 property insurance as presented on page 18 of the attached analysis that you have in the board book uh, <clears throat> for a total annual premium of $2,031,490.25. Uh, renewal of the sexual misconduct liability insurance at an annual premium of 173000 $101.50 is not recommended. The proposals were analyzed by Mr. Joe Blasey, the district's insurance advisor who is here this evening, to answer any questions that you might have, uh, and, and reviewed by myself. Uh, the total recommended annual premium, as I indicated, was $2,031,490.25, uh, which represents a 21% reduction in the premium amount, which which results in a savings of $427,946.75. Uh, <clears throat> it should be noted that the recommended educator's legal liability insurance coverage, which is from ACE, uh, which is included in this recommendation, uh, includes defense-only coverage for sexual misconduct claims. AIG has submitted a proposal for renewal of sexual misconduct insurance at an annual premium of $173,101.50. This insurance includes a $500,000 self-insured retention for each victim. CISD administration believes that many large school districts in Texas are self-insuring this risk, and we recommend non-renewal of the AIG sexual misconduct liability insurance coverage. And again, uh, Mr. Blasey is here to address any questions that you might have related to I hear a, I want to some questions first. I'll move the approval. 
I'll second and that way we can okay. Motion has been made and seconded. <coughs> uh, comments and questions? Saints. Um, could Mr. Blasey explain or give us a little background on the um, kind of why the larger Texas schools are self-insuring the sexual misconduct when that seems to be what you hear in the news? And so your exposure seems to be greater, not less. So it really has to do with uh, what the insurance market's interest is in insuring those exposures. As Mr. Cox explained, the recommended plan does include some limited coverage for defense costs, legal defense costs associated with those allegations. But as far as settlements and judgments and even a defense for the alleged perpetrator, uh, most school districts simply cannot find an economic uh, risk transfer solution via an insurance policy. Yeah. So it's cost prohibitive for large Texas schools to basically get the kind of coverage they'd like so they have no choice but to self-insure is what you're saying. And, and I think that's indicative okay. of proposals. Have. Yeah. One, we can only find all. Uh -huh. right. As you can see, that proposal has a fairly high premium and then a $500,000 per incident uh, yeah. deductible. Yeah. So, so essentially, uh, you, you incur almost three quarters of a million dollars cost before you ever get one dollar of cover. Thank you for affirming that. Certainly. I want to ask something about the workers' comp and and to let you know up front, this is not my field. So, <laughs> so I'll try to. to do it. Um, what are our, our uh, about our five-year losses on workmen's comp? Our average right uh, now. We've done an analysis, uh, and I'll provide that to the board following the meeting. But uh, essentially, the district's claims experience annually has ranged anywhere from a million four five years ago to four hundred thousand dollars a few years ago. Uh, currently, or rather, this uh, the 0708 year is at about seven hundred thousand dollars, and the 0607 year is at about nine hundred thousand dollars. So you can see the value, uh, or rather, the price uh, that TASB is offering for a fully insured program with that loss experience. It's pretty aggressive. But I will provide an annual summary of the of the claims experience for each year of the last five years uh, to the board. Is is does it make sense to look at a self insured in that area? And we certainly did last year and this year. And uh, the 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 issue is at what point can we buy stop loss insurance if we're going to go self insured? And unfortunately, the best stop loss attachment point this year came in at $3.8 million. So we'd have to hire a third party claims administrator. We'd have to pay premium for the stop loss insurance. We'd have to pay all of our claims virtually out of our pocket up to, say, a $300,000 per claim limit. And then we'd still, we wouldn't have insurance, as Dan described a second ago, we wouldn't have insurance coverage on the aggregate level until we hit $3.8 million. Had TASB not provided or some other carrier not provided such an aggressive proposal, uh, we would certainly be looking at self-insurance. It's not an uncommon practice by Texas school districts. As a matter of fact, T TASB also offers a, a self-insured plan that, that at some point we may have to look at. But as long as the district's claims uh, activity is improving, as it has been the last few years, uh, then we seem to be doing pretty well in the marketplace finding a fully insured plan. To uh, many of the other larger school districts, uh, are they um, self-insured with the workers' comp? Uh, most are. I would say that most districts, larger districts, are self-insured, and that has to do with the fact that they haven't been able to contain their workers' comp claims the way that CISD has. But the moment that uh, you as an employer can no longer control your claims cost and get people back to work on light duty and that sort of thing, uh, you'll see your claims experience go up, and you'll see the fully insured plans become cost prohibitive, and you'll have to you'll have to look at self insurance. I would also suggest that most of those uh, 
uh, school districts probably have a full-time risk management staff as well. Which we do not outsource that. Uh, so I, and, and we've been successful doing it. Now that may change. Thank you. Nice savings on the premium, sir. Yes, sir. Any other questions or comments? Okay, the motion has been made and seconded that we uh, award CSP 28006 um, Workman's Comp Insurance, CSP 28007 Auto General and Education, Educators Legal Liability Insurance, and CSP 008 Property Insurance. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, same sign. Madam Secretary, I need to abstain because I'm an officer of Souls Insurance. Thank you very much. You. Item uh, 6B, Dr. Stockton. Okay, Mr. Cox is uh, back again to talk about the preliminary 2008-2009 proposed budget. Okay, once again, uh, President Sasser, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. I uh, want to talk tonight uh, once again about the 2008-2009 budget. Uh, as you'll recall from our last presentation, uh, the theme this year is new facilities. We are opening seven new facilities in the 08-09 year. Uh, and you saw a number of them uh, on the presentation tonight by Mr. Burns. Uh, York Junior High, Cox Intermediate, Rangerland Intermediate, a Wood Forest Bank Stadium, CISD Natatorium, and the Oak Ridge Transportation and Oak Ridge Warehouse and, and Maintenance Facility. So uh, we're, we, were, we were challenged with that task of, of bringing those facilities online and developing a, a successful budget, and I'm proud to say that we've been able to do that. Uh, I'm going to review some of the high, the the, uh, the slides that we looked at at our last presentation, but I'm not going to go in go through them in detail as we did before. But I just want to uh, reiterate that 0708 has been a, a really successful and uh, financial year. And uh, <clears throat> you know, I mentioned before that we see the coming year being more challenging, and uh, we're certainly going to be dealing with a more challenging environment as going forward, mainly because of the changes and the evolution of the school finance system. But I'm happy to say, as I mentioned before, that our challenge right now is to manage our surplus. Many of our, 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 mem our peer districts in the area are already facing challenges of deficit budgets. So, uh, we think we're in a very good position relative to other school districts, but it's clearly more challenging than it has been. Uh, once again, I'm not going to go through the detail, but I want to remind you that uh, our goal as we put together our budgets is to achieve excellent academic outcomes in a cost-effective manner, and I'm happy to say that we're, we're doing that. We're seeing outstanding academic results. And as you can see from this slide, if you look down at the bottom, we're doing it in a very cost-effective manner. We're proud of that. As predicted, we now have the lowest tax rate among the, our peer group, and we expect to maintain this relative position going forward. We've looked at the fund balance. We, we look at this every year. Our goal is to is to maintain a 15 to 20 percent uh, fund balance compared to our budget. Uh, we actually got a little uh, higher than that in the last few years, so uh, we've been fortunate to be able to take advantage of that in several different ways. Uh, <clears throat> you'll recall that we took our 07, uh, our 06, 07 surplus of 14 million, which is that uh, maroon colored peak there, and we designated that to be a bonus school uh, in, that we have since started. So uh, we funded that bonus skill, school in 07, uh, 07-08, and <clears throat> so that $14 million has now come out of our fund balance this current year. We expect to add approximately $2 million to the fund balance uh, as of August 31st of this year. We continue to maintain a steady upward trend on enrollment. 
Uh, we'll be very, uh, we'll be looking at that closely this year as we see the effects of the economy, see if that has any effect. Uh, but early indications are, are that it does not. That we continue to get the growth that we anticipated. Uh, and we've had a very consistent upward trend. Uh, attendance data, you can see that, I think it's real interesting to note the last four years. You can see that uh, starting in 2006, we had a significant uptick in enrollment growth. Uh, you can see that we went 2174, 1971, 21, 22. And for this coming year, we're projecting 1,998 in enrollment increase. So we're using in our budget 2,000 for enrollment growth. You can also see a corresponding uh, uh, growth, a correlated growth in ADA over the last few years. And we're using 1,700 as our ADA number for, for uh, 08, 09. And if you look at those, you can see that those are clearly an ex higher than our 10-year average in these areas. So we continue to be on an upward trend on growth. <clears throat> Property values. Now, this is a slide that has changed slightly since our last presentation. Uh, you can see now that we're projecting an 11.59% increase in assessed value. Uh, the good news about that is that it does help us in our debt service. Uh, it does not particularly help us in our M&O budget uh, because the state captures that growth, essentially. But uh, this 1.5% increase will generate about 550000 additional revenue for, for debt service. So that's a positive from debt service standpoint. Since we don't have our copy with us, uh, Dan, uh, what was the number before 1159? 10.15%. 10, 10, 10 it went up about 1.5%. Uh, these are the latest estimates that we have from the appraisal district. Now, you can see that, ironically, the 11.59 is right about on our 10-year average of a growth and assessed value. Rather amazing, really, growth. Uh, the next slide is the, it relates to salaries. Uh, once again, TASB, we've worked with TASB Compensation Group to uh, develop a, a salary recommendation. Uh, they have recommended a general pay increase of 3.5%. Uh, in addition to that, we had them do a special review of several areas, particularly police uh, and campus paras. Uh, there were other isolated positions included as well, but those were the primary target areas because they were areas that we recognized needed some attention. And we have, uh, they came back with good recommendations in those areas. We've included those in our, in our compensation recommendation. Uh, we're recommending a teacher raise of $1,710 uh, and a starting teacher salary of $43,000. Uh, the overall cost of a 3.5% of this salary recommendation uh, is approximately $8.2 million. And we believe that the 3.5% increase will be equal to or greater than most districts in this area. And moving to the teacher salary schedule, which I will ask you to approve after this presentation. Uh, you can see that this is the teacher salary schedule that's being proposed. You'll notice that in years 11 through 15, there are some, some slight equity adjustments proposed as well, which we believe will be <coughs> the final piece in bringing our teacher salary schedule in, in line across the board as to where we would like to be uh, based on recommendations from the TASB. Well, I'd like to commend the board on the diligence in reviewing this and approving teacher raises over the last several years. Four years ago, I compared this salary to our neighbor, one of our neighboring districts. And in the 25 um, years that we broke it up, 23 of the years we were behind our neighboring district, one of the neighboring districts we compete against. And today, um, we are uh, just a couple of those 25. We were behind 23. Today, it's just the opposite. We're ahead 22 of the areas and the other three are within the hundred dollars so we've made great progress mm -hmm. yeah I would 
I think it's interesting to note that over the last four years, we've uh, raised the starting salary $9,000, and we've raised average teacher pay approximately $10,000. And there's been some significant improvements in pay, which is what we started out to do. So I commend the board. Any, if you have any questions, uh, just feel free to uh, step in. Uh, the next page, you've seen this page. There has been one adjustment to this page. Uh, we, as I'm indicated in the last presentation, we lowered the number of unallocated positions from 20 to 15. We actually have picked up and covered those five positions in some grant money. So we haven't actually lowered our ability to service or to deal with growth or unexpected uh, additional needs. But we have lowered our budget, 250000 So uh, that was a... Uh, the effect of that was lowering our budget to 250000 And once again, I, I, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but I've, we've talked about it several times. Uh, we are taking advantage this year. Uh, the uh, we're, We have two additional enriched pennies, super pennies, that are available. We can access one of them because we can access it without going over a $1.04. Uh, if we go over a dollar four, it requires a rollback election. But since that penny is there for us, and and by accessing it, we generate an additional 1.1 million of of uh, state funding. Uh, we think that we should go ahead and do that. Uh, so I'm recommending that we raise our our M and O tax rate from a dollar three to a dollar four in a, in order to access this additional enriched penny, super penny. The famous super penny. Uh -huh. Now looking at the <coughs> budget overview, uh, <coughs> there, there's only been a couple of changes in this. Uh, we did actually, uh, the increase in appraised value did actually generate uh, some additional revenue on the revenue side, primarily because of the enriched pennies. Uh, so we've got an additional 400000 on the revenue side. Uh, we did lower our expenses by 250000 when we took out those five positions. Uh, so we're, uh, before we were looking uh, <clears throat> at a deficit of uh, $5.6 million. Now we're looking at a deficit uh, of uh, $5 million, which lowers our uh, $18 million surplus to 13 million leaves us with 13 million to transfer over to debt service to continue to subsidize debt service and that's what we're doing with our surplus now uh, so I, I think the uh, uh, the good news here is that we're able to put together a budget uh, which essentially uh, eats into our surplus by five million dollars okay uh, just a, a comment, this this 18.4 million increase in, in expenditures is a 6.25% increase in our expenditures. Uh, <clears throat> when you consider the fact that we're giving a 3.5% salary increase, which is essentially our inflationary factor, uh, and that we've got 4.3% in enrollment, uh, we feel that that's a very reasonable cost increase, it's taking those two factors into consideration. <coughs> this is the official preliminary budget. Uh, you can see that we have the general operating fund, the general fund budget in the first column. Uh, important things to look at there are we're proposing, as I indicated, a one cent increase on the tax rate going from a dollar three to a dollar four. Uh, interesting note, this generates 63% of our funding locally and 37% from the state. If you'll recall, when, we, when House Bill 1 was passed, one of the big objectives was to, for the state to pick up a bigger share of the funding. And at that time, we, they were paying for 20% of our budget. Uh, when House Bill 1 passed, the last two years they've been at 40%, or actually 41% last year. 
So <clears throat> where you can see that the trend has turned around again and it's starting to go back the other way. <laughs> Uh, so that it was 41% last year. It's now going now looking at 37%. So we're kind of headed back in the same direction that we were going. So we had the past problems. Um, the uh, you can see down at the the bottom, we're proposing transferring just over 13 million to the debt service fund uh, to subsidize our debt service. Uh, this is based on the property value that's listed there in 1,700 ADA growth. Uh, the middle column, special revenue funds, is child nutrition, technology allotment, and high school allotment. And essentially, uh, those are the revenues and expenses related to uh, those particular categories. And, the, and, and there will be other special revenues that come in during the year, but these are the ones that you budget right here. And do you feel pretty comfortable given the rapidly increasing fuel costs and that we're going to be able to deal with that with this budget this, at least this year? Uh, we'll be able to deal with it. Uh, I mean, we were we were short this year. I mean, and we, have we we had to come up with additional money, okay. uh, and we've we've upped our increase. We we covered that as well as made a substantial increase in the budget. Uh, do I know what's going to happen? No. Uh, but we've put a reasonable number in there. Uh, and, and you know, even though they're very large numbers, they're, they're, they're still, we're able to deal with variations in them. Uh, but, yeah, it's a big number. And should it uh, increase, where, where is, we'll have a, a plan in, in place to be able to, uh, add to that number in that. Yeah, we can. Way. Yeah, we we can we can handle the fluctuations. It makes it more challenging the next year when you're budgeting because you got to make up that difference right. and then you got to add on for the other. Uh, and we've done that in this budget. Uh, uh, we uh, we had a, 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 a fairly significant increase in the budget last year, and it was only about fifty percent of what we needed. Dan, if I understand correctly, you feel kind of like I do. You have very little faith that this state legislature is going to do anything to correct this problem for next year. I'm talking about specifically for next year, not never. Right. I mean, all we can do is look year to year. And if I was sitting here with a budget deficit, you know, in my personal, in my business, or or wherever I was. And I didn't see any hope for the next year of the revenue side changing, okay, uh, more than what our internal numbers allow us to do. I believe I'd be starting making steps to correct it now. Please, please, please don't misread me. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm all for yeah. salary increases. I want, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but if we don't start doing something this year, it's $5 million this year. What's it going to be next year? And so on and so forth. And, and uh, you know, I hope I'm wrong, and I hope we get some immediate help. But their last example of how they helped us and how long it took them to help us, supposedly help us, I should say, uh, is not a good track record. And I know we're blessed with a budget surplus, and I know that we're using that to buy our debt side down and super pennies, and well, we're at the end of that rope. And I'm, I'm going to ask one last time, you know, not because I don't want everybody to have an inflationary increase. We know their gas prices are going up, too. But when Dr. Brown asked about, you know, an extra 50 cents in gasoline for the district, that's pocket change compared to what I'm talking about. Absolutely. And, by the way, we did cut back on the raise that we initially looked at. Uh, it's come down And, and, and as unfortunate <laughs> as that is... You know, we've all got to tighten our belts a little bit, but what I am saying is if if we're I, going to, you know, it's great to say we're sending $13 million to debt service, but we're sending 13 instead of 18. I mean, let's not lose sight of that $5 well, million. Well, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think you've hit, you've correctly identified the key inflationary factor, and I can tell you that 
if the state, as long as the state continues a, po a, a position of providing no funding for inflationary growth, uh, raises are going to be very challenging in the future going forward. And, and I understand what you're saying. Now, uh, I will tell you here the, the strategy that we're using is to manage this 18 million so that we can get three years down the road. Now, I don't know another district that's going to make it three years in this environment. And so I, I feel, as you do, that they will not solve the problem in this legislative session. I am hopeful that they will deal with it properly yeah. by the, the next one. And I think we can get to that point. I'm going to tell you there's going to be so many train wrecks before then that, uh, that we uh, will be feeling – if we get three years down the road, we'll be feeling pretty good because, because we have done the thing. One of the reasons we're able to we're, where we are is because we have been uh, prudent in the Very past. Very prudent. And I congratulate and, you. Well, it's not being, me. It's, well, it's, sure it's, 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 sure it's a large part of you because you bring us the numbers yeah. and you're highly accurate. And, and when you're not accurate, you're cheating to the better of the district. I mean, it's like this 11.53. I mean, you always put 10 in there and you got six for the next two years. I mean, I understand what you're doing, but but what I am saying is we better find a place to tighten our belt. Well, I mean, and, we and I know that we've done that in transportation, and I'm not picking on anybody, and I'm not saying anything, but, you know, if you had relate this, you know, this, this size budget to your personal budget, you'd go find that $5,000 you were short somehow. I mean, there wouldn't be any more vacation, or there wouldn't be any more of this or that or the other. Um, and I think we, we better, I, and I, I guarantee you I understand this, that every cut we make from this point forward is going to be real uncomfortable on us probably, I, I might add. Well, let me jump in. Um, what, you, what you'll see, our budget's about 86% personnel, as, as you know. Um, we have done some things, as Dan alluded to, uh, several years ago with teacher ratios, with um, administrative ratios, really ahead of the curve of what some other districts are having gone through. And we're reading about some of those other districts right now that have, have deficit budgets and they're trying to make cuts. As we go forward, um, the, where we're going to make the impact is on our personnel. So as we go forward, we'll have to take a look at those things. Um, and I, I hesitate to do that yet uh, because we're – there's not a lot of fat on the bone anymore. So we start making cuts, it's going to make some academic in, uh, impact negative on academics. Um, we've, we've been successful, and, and I think you've seen uh, some of the information Dan showed, but if you remember, the uh, ERG group came in and ran a, what might be our new accountability system, shared some information with us about uh, academic accountability and financial accountability, and, and we are in that top quadrant of all the districts in the state. Um, but going forward, uh, you know, the plan's pretty easy to put together to make significant differences in personnel, and as we as, and we'll certainly take a look at that as we go forward. Um, I am I, I don't know. I, there's a lot of conversation now in the state about uh, what's happening financially. There's some major districts that are um, I don't want to say on the verge of bankruptcy, but there's some major districts that are in, have some incredible challenges this fall. And there's more and more talk. Um, when we met with the legislators, they were very open to looking at some things. So I don't. You know, I think we're going to see something happen. I don't know yeah. the significance no, I, of something yeah. happening in this I, session. I, I think something you'll see some happen. patchwork. I suspect, but I think it'll take two sessions before they really uh, can come up, come through with some real solutions. The, the other thing I wanted to share with you is, is the recommendations for new personnel and all those things. Those have been. Uh, those were not the. Uh, the initial uh, requests. Um, we, we have really went through, and, and I commend the administrative staff and everybody, we've really went through a process of uh, it has to be absolutely needed at this point, or it doesn't, you never see it. Well, I think that's indicated by the fact that I mentioned this at the last presentation. Last year's new personnel was $9.9 .9 million. Mm -hmm. This year we opened seven facilities, and it's $9.7 million. So, uh, we were able to deal with the same amount of student growth, open these facilities, and actually hold our additional personnel to less than we had last year. So, so that all that to say is, um, you know, you know, we're uh, we're preparing for the future, and, and 
when we when we have to make um, some tough decisions, we'll be ready to bring that forward to you. <laughs> Mr. Cox, yes, uh, sure. with us adding uh, seven new facilities, uh, could you uh, share with us what impact, what positive impact you think the new technology from the, the bus, uh, the new buses that we purchased? I know there were some things that help us in terms of the fuel. Could you kind of touch on that and see what positive impact that should have? Well, most of that has been in the area of air quality. Uh, we haven't really, uh, we haven't really addressed. I mean, I mean, it's not really improving. Uh, uh, we, we haven't gone to any. We're looking at some alternative fuels and stuff, but we haven't really done anything. We haven't gone to hybrid buses or anything like that. But we have we have instituted technology that's dramatically improved air quality. Okay, so but, but the new buses that we replace, that we buy, do they have any impact but, at all? They have all of that technology in them. Uh, they have some GPS. We're, we're, we're now incorporating GPS technology into all our buses. And, and we do believe that that will help us become, you know, uh, optimize the operation of those buses. And we believe there's reason to believe that we can improve that. Uh, but, but that, we haven't, we're just now starting to do that and haven't really measured that. Okay, uh, and then you can see the debt service, uh, and of course the uh, the thirteen million is is a critical component of this. Uh, the budget, uh, looking at uh, the the traditional pie chart that we look at every year, you can see that uh, salaries and benefits, people intensive business, eighty six percent. Services, 26%. This is where uh, eight and a half, I mean, 26 million, eight, eight point six percent. Uh, this is utilities is the print is the, the major component of that. Uh, supplies, fuel is the major component of supplies. Uh, and then uh, equipment and other and the other is insurance. So you can see that that's, uh, that's a big, that's the big component of, of that. Uh, Total budget again, uh, proposed budget 312 million 25,699, which is a 6.25 percent increase. Uh, reviewing the fund balance, I alluded to some of this earlier in our discussions. You can see that 0607, uh, we came in with a 14.4 million dollar budget uh, surplus, which we used uh, to fund a school. Uh, you can see at that time that our uh, our our target fund balance we were uh, over by almost five million. Uh, so then in 0708 uh, we had an 18 million dollar surplus which we have uh, funded used to subsidize debt service, and then 0809 we're projecting a fund balance of about 64 million. Our target number for September 1, this coming September 1, will be 62.5 million. Uh, you can see that we're projecting 64 million, which would generate a 13 million dollar surplus, which would go to debt service. I'm going to come back later in the year once we're, once we nail down what our fund balance is. And any that we have over 62.5 million, I think we're going to have a discussion about whether we should take that and put it over to debt service as well for the next year, because we're going to need more help next year as well. <clears throat> so that's, but, but the good news is, and, and when I say target here, I'm talking about 20%. That's the high end number. Our range, our goal, our stated objective five years ago was to keep it between 15 and 20 percent. Uh, clearly, we went over 20 percent, and we've been over 20 percent. Uh, so, when I'm using a target number, that target number is 20 percent level. So, we're still, uh, even if we go to the target, we're still at the high end of our of our stated objective. Okay. And then again, we'll look at a, a slide that we've looked at several times this year. Really, this is to help us keep the tax rate in perspective. Uh, 
the o back when we were developing at our 0708 tax rate, we you'll recall that at that point in time we had uh, projected when we approved the 2004 bond referendum a tax rate of 35 cents. At that time a year ago, we were projecting a tax rate of 29 cents. But then we made the decision to buy that tax rate, take our surplus and lower that tax rate because we could raise our, our M&O tax rate five cents. We could lower our debt service tax rate seven or eight cents, which is what we chose to do. Uh, so this current year, 0708, we've carried a debt service tax rate of 21 cents where we would have been at 29 cents had we not done that. So. That helps you keep it in perspective. Now, the challenge that creates is every two million that we reduce that subsidy, you pop one of those pennies back. <laughs> so that's that's what we're dealing with right now. So what we're recommending for this coming year is a M&O tax rate of a dollar four, a one cent increase over last year's M&O tax rate, and that one cent is to access that additional enriched penny. Uh, we're recommending a debt service tax rate of 23 cents. That's a two cent increase. But essentially, all of that increase is the result of reducing our subsidy uh, from M&O to debt service, which we're reducing by $5 million. So uh, that's really where, if, if it wasn't for that subsidy reduction, we wouldn't have a tax rate increase in debt service this year. <clears throat> so. That leaves us with a total tax rate of $1.27, a three cent increase. Uh, I would point out that the $1.27 tax rate is still 49 cents lower than the 2005-2006 tax rate. I don't know anybody that's sitting in that position or that will be sitting in that position in 07-08, I mean 08 09 with a tax rate that's 49 cents lower than they had in 05-06. Uh, so we're still, um, as I said, I see no, I have no concern that we will, I'm absolutely confident that we will continue to retain our position as the lowest tax rate among our peer group. Uh, we know several of them, what they're doing now. We know that Klein is doing, is proposing a rollback election going all the way to $1.17 on their MNO tax rate. And that's, that they've already published that. What? <laughs> I said Klein. I apologize. <laughs> it was it's humble, not Klein, that proposed the rollback. Yeah, I don't want to start a crisis for them. <laughs> but, but no, it, it is humble that proposed the the, uh, the the rollback. Uh, so that's that's where we are. Uh, I I do think that uh, this this whole issue that we're dealing with is essentially the result of the current finance system not properly, not dealing at all with inflationary cost increases. If if there was a way, and, and I'm not saying that there's not reason, uh, uh, certainly the state has a reason to incentivize people to cut their costs and to optimize their operations, but, uh, but it has no mechanism in there for those that are doing that to gain, uh, to deal with inflationary costs. Uh, so basically, the hammer comes down on everybody, not just those that that it needs to come down on. Uh, this is an interesting chart. It's, uh, you know, I think it shows a good picture, uh, and I believe that our our I would put this up against anybody else's picture, uh, and it shows that it just basically is a pictorial of what I was saying before. And what you've heard many times in, in uh, 2008, we had dropped our tax rate 52 cents. Uh, for next year, we're projecting that that'll go up three cents, but it still is a net 49 cent reduction, which I think is a good picture. And then this is the same information we've looked at before. Uh, I would close with the same comments that I had, that I made at the last presentation, and that's that CISD is in great financial condition. Compared to most of our peer districts, uh, we have a, a low tax rate and a, and a surplus that should care, that we're hoping will carry us another three years. You know, we've been saying two to three years, but our goal is to get three years down the road with that. 
uh, and that's assuming that there's no changes in the current environment. Hopefully that'll change and it won't be a problem. But assuming that we have to deal with those problems, uh, we're positioning ourselves to make it three years down the road. Uh, <clears throat> we do think there's serious flaws in the school finance systems, specifically uh, the fact that it doesn't deal with inflationary cost increases or provide funding for facilities for fast growth school districts adequately. Uh, we're getting zero EDA funding in, in, in this budget. Last year we got 1.5 million. The reason we're getting no funding is that our local assessed values have, have gone, have, have increased so much that we've gone out of the range of, of funding. Uh, but yet we, other than debt service, we don't get any benefit from that. Yeah. So they haven't updated those numbers. So basically, we're getting zero funding. So we we believe that there ought to be some uh, facility assistance for fast growth districts, more than there is now. Uh, we did recently meet with our legislators, as you know, uh, and we expressed these concerns to them, and we're hopeful that they will address them uh, in the coming session, hopefully. Any, qu any questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Cox. We really appreciate what you and all of your department has uh, done. It's uh, when you visit with school board members uh, in our area from different schools, um, they aren't nearly as optimistic about things as, as we are with ours. And, and um, we appreciate that the financial responsibility and also the fact that we've been able to, which I think is very important, we've also been able to uh, give the races and and keep the, our folks um, with us because if we don't do that, then we fail as a school system. So I appreciate very, appreciate very much what you've done. And if we want to move to the um, teacher hiring chart and salary schedule. Okay. I uh, recommend the Board of Trustees approves the 2008-2009 teacher hiring chart and salary schedule that you see on the overhead here. Uh, we believe that uh, it's beneficial to approve the teacher hiring and salary schedule earlier in the budget process. We would like to have done it earlier than this, but uh, because of the issues, we didn't. Uh, as I indicated before, we're proposing a, a $1,710 increase and a starting teacher salary of 43000 The total cost of teacher salaries, uh, if we approve this schedule, out of the $8.2 million, this is $5.3 million of those increases. Um, I was asking. Okay, I guess we can ask now. I, I'm curious to know, uh, does this include any increase for substitute teachers? We do not. Well, this does not. No. No, this does okay. not address okay. substitute okay. teachers. Do, when we will we address substitute teacher salaries? We, we have addressed it the last two years. Okay. We, we do, currently do not have any increases okay. in this year. That, that's correct, in the cap. Yeah, we we have addressed it the last two years. Okay. We do not have anything in there. For, we don't have any increases in this year. And how much has it been the last two years? Ten dollars. Yeah, we we raised it per, 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 per day. Five dollars per day. So, okay, how much is it a day now? It's varies. It's what are the ranges up to? If you're certified. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. That's how much. Uh, the motion has been made and seconded that we approve the 2008-2009 teacher hiring chart and salary schedule as submitted. Any other questions or comments? All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you very much, Mr. Cox. Uh, Dr. Stockton, item 6D. 6D are the financial reports. Mr. Cox is going to fill in for Mr. Rice. Unless you want to give me a pass. So <laughs> we'll give you a pass. I'll say so moved. Yeah, so we'll give you a pass. I've read them. Okay. Gave you a pass. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do you understand them now? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 
We have uh, nothing to discuss in executive session, so we will skip item 7 and 8 and move to item 9B, which is the Human Resources Report. Do I have a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. What about the... Oh, sorry, no. The motion has been uh, made and seconded that we accept the Human Resources Report. Questions or comments? All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we'll move on to legal then. Um, item 10A. 10A is a Shenandoah letter of agreement relating to the CISD Natatorium. Now, we've been approached by the city of Shenandoah, and with us tonight in the audience is the city manager, Chip Van Steenberg, and Gary Mayor Watts. I want to welcome them to our board meeting. We've been approached by the city of Shenandoah to enter into discussions on the possibility of of an additional swim space or dive space or whatever um, being built adjacent to our natatorium. When we designed the natatorium, we left a green space there um, for potential expansion in the future. The, um, the letter agreement is not binding, it just allows us to start talking about the possibility. Uh, the, as we go forward, the, the important thing for CISD is that it will be at no cost to CISD and uh, will benefit not only the CISD and the auditorium, but also the City of Shenandoah. So that letter agreement is, is before you and I ask that you approve it that, that will allow us to enter in so discussions. Anything official, obviously, would be brought back to the board, and we will update the board um, as we work through this process. Second. Question has been made and seconded that we uh, authorize Dr. Stodden to do enter into negotiations with the city of Shenandoah. And um, any other questions or comments? All approve, raise your hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We'll move to item uh, 10C, which is always eagerly awaited at this time of year, to see who would like to be the delegate to the TASB convention. So I open the floor for nominations. I nominate Linda Sash. <laughs> I second that. Second. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, they so <laughs> I'm uh, anybody opposed to my being the delegate? I will be happy to serve as the delegate. Uh, we'll move on to item 10D. 10D is, is the approval of order and notice of the November 4, 2008 Board of Trustees general election. Mrs. Galatis. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Thank With your permission, I'd like to talk about 10D and E kind of together. Um, as you know, um, this will be our first experience since the 80th legislative session uh, with the changes the legislature mandated regarding trustee elections. Um, as a result of legislation that was passed, we moved to four-year terms. We changed our election date um, to the November regular election date, and we'll be conducting trustee elections every other year. So the four of you are up naturally for um, election, and then we have the unexpired term that will be filled by a special election. The special election and the general election will occur simultaneously with each other. The only differences will be the filing time periods that the statute sets out that candidates for the general election will be able to begin filing on um, July 28th. Candidates running for position two, the unexpired term, can file on July 30th, and it's just a quirk in the statute. Um, Everything else will be the same, really, as our bond election was. The county will be running the election. We'll bring a joint election agreement to you to approve because the statute requires that. We'll have early voting sites that the county selects, and then the 58 or so odd precincts for voting on election day. And so I present you with the general election order and uh, and then in a subsequent motion, the special election order that are basically very similar. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, can we vote on those separately? Together? Oh, you separate, I, well, separately? I would separately. First, separately, yes, okay. please. Okay. All right. I so move we'll. The first one. Okay. Second. Oh, I have a 
Motion and a second that we approve the election order and notice of November 4th, 2008, School Board of Trustees General Election. Co questions or comments? All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Madam President, I move the approval of the second one. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the election order and notice of November 4, 2008, School Board of Trustees special election. Any comments or questions? All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Um, item uh, 10F under legal is uh, something that we do every year. Uh, the Board of Trustees, each one of the Board of Trustees is required to um, get continuing education credits. And it is my privilege to announce tonight that um, as Texas law requires that at the meeting, this meeting to call the general trustee election, the president of the board announce the status of each board member's continuing education training credits. I am pleased to announce that all board members, Mel Brown, John Husband, C.J. Haynes, Gerald E. Irons Sr., Ann Snyder, and myself, Linda Sasser, have completed all required continuing education credits to date. And I request, Madam Secretary, that the minutes reflect this information. Okay. We are now to uh, under legal item uh, 10G. <laughs> item 10G is level three grievance hearing of Mark S. This is Gladys. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Um, before we proceed, I think there are several members of the board that might need to take a break. If we could, before we begin this item, if that's okay. Great idea. <laughs> You're so kind. <laughs> you want to recess for a moment and then come yes. back? Um, the board is in recess. It is 7.40 p.m. Not because I said so, because Ms. Sasser said so. The board is back in session from the recess. It is now uh, 7.50 p.m. Ms. Galatis. Thank you, Ms. Snyder. It is now time for uh, the Level 3 Grievance Hearing of Mr. Mark S. Um, this meeting is convened, of course, on July 15th, and the following members of the board are present. Dr. Ann Snyder, Dr. Mel Brown, Ms. Linda Sasser, Mr. Gerald Irons, Mr. John Husbands, and Ms. C.J. Haynes. For the record, a quorum is present, and we are meeting for the purpose of hearing the appeal of the complaint of Mr. Mark Smith. This grievance involves a complaint against the district employee Therefore, under Texas Government Code Section 551.074 and 551.082, this meeting will be held in closed session. At this time, this meeting of the Conrad Independent School District Board of Trustees is adjourned into executive session under Texas Government Code Section 551.074 and 551.082 of the Texas Opens Meetings Act. Everyone not associated with this hearing should now leave the room. The board will take no action while in executive session, and the time is now 7.52 p.m. Congratulations again, by the way. Thanks yes, very nice. And it's time for the board to make a decision on the issue facing it. Is there a motion? I move to uphold the district level two decision. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Any opposed? Sign. I'm not. I'm not going to vote. I think the point was. Want us to vote. So. Abstain. I'm abstaining. The board has now voted. The ayes um, have, have it, and um, I will send you, Mr. Smith, a formal notice of the decision that was made. It's concluded. Could uh, can I just say something before you leave, um, Mr. Smith? Um, I, I would just recommend to you that you sit down with, with your son and just talk him through this whole thing. But as he has already graduated and he's about to go off into the world, hopefully in college, whatever he chooses to do, start his own company, he wanted to get into entrepreneurship. But I just suggest that you sit down with your son, walk him through this whole thing, and look at it as a learning, look at it as a, as, as a, as a teaching opportunity for you. The last time you probably will have before he goes out into the world and just let him know that in life, sometimes you have to buckle down 
and things may not happen the way you expect them to happen or even you want them to happen. But just explain to him that you have to do what you have to do to get through your situation until you can do what you want to do. And, and, and sometimes you just can't shut down. When I read through this thing, he, he just shut down. Excellent grades in his other four courses. Excellent grades. He just shut down. And you and your wife, perhaps, noticed that he had shut down. And that would have been a prime opportunity for you to have the talk with him then that I'm suggesting that you have with him at some future time, as soon as possible. But let him know that shutting down is not the answer. I mean, there are a lot of things that happen to all of us. You, I'm sure, can recall that in life that we may not like, we may not enjoy, but we just simply have to do what we have to do to get through it. And so, I mean, if we have one course to just shut him down uh, the way he did. Uh, I mean, I mean, I just think that, uh, that there was an opportunity you had passed up. Hopefully you can regain that uh, communication with him and hopefully he'll learn because when he goes off to college or whatever else he chooses to do, they're going to, I mean, he's going to run into the rest of his life. He's going to run into situations a lot worse than this, missing the track meet, a lot worse than this. So that, that's, that's what I'd like to, to leave with you. And hopefully you will uh, take me up on it and, and, and do it. Hopefully we'll hear great things about your son um, later on. That's all I have to say. Do I hear a motion that we adjourn? I move. Second? Second. We adjourn. Thank you all very much. Work. Of course, our financial advisors have done a great job in.